In this demo of Cloudflare Zero Trust, we're going to contrast traditional methods of network and application access with Zero Trust controls available to users in Cloudflare. We'll begin with a classic web application access scenario for a self hosted application like Jira and highlight how Zero Trust makes the user experience faster and more reliable than a legacy VPN solution. Then we'll show how Cloudflare can provide true Zero Trust access to private IPs and also how its app connector can manage access to non web applications as well. Let's get started. I've onboarded multiple self-hosted applications to Cloudflare here, each with outbound tunnels to Cloudflare's edge. When someone uses Cloudflare Zero Trust, they're putting our entire global Anycast network in front of their own and then using it to build a private network on the internet. When the request reaches our edge, Cloudflare verifies the user's identity and any device posture requirements before they're granted access to the resource. Let's start with a self-hosted instance of Jira and in the process, contrast traditional methods of application security alongside our platform. In this example, I've not only onboarded this application to Cloudflare, but I've also set up a parallel non-Cloudflare authentication method with OpenVPN. This user is currently accessing an instance of Jira via their corporate VPN. Rather than authenticating to the resource, this user is being permitted to the subnet that this application exists on, which represents a significant security issue if it's improperly configured. Once I'm logged in, I access the Jira bookmark in my browser, which takes me to the login page. However, with this setup, I could poke around inside my network and access resources which are outside the scope of my job, like this firewall I'm logging into. This kind of lateral movement is unfortunately common in many legacy implementations. And once inside my firewall, I would like to point out another security flaw. I've had to configure a rule to enable OpenVPN in my network punching a hole in my firewall that I'll need to secure moving forward. In general, the fewer holes I have in my firewall, the more secure my organization will be. I've also enabled Zero Trust Network Access to Jira using our app connector, Cloudflare Tunnel. This enables my users to authenticate to this privately hosted resource, and only this resource, from a URL. Here, we can see I'm using Okta as my IDP, but Cloudflare supports most major identity providers and custom SAML configurations. While I was able to move laterally across my network over the VPN, I can no longer reach the firewall that I was previously accessing. Another way to manage access to this resource is by using zero trust rules with private IPs. When you onboard self-hosted applications, you can specify specific internal IPs rather than host names. Cloudflare enables you to create network rules that enforce IDP authentication and session durations providing a true zero trust experience for resources that organizations would rather not expose over external DNS. I have the device client active and I'm attempting to access the IP address of Jira. And we can see an authentication prompt appear despite this device already being signed in to my instance of Cloudflare. This is because Cloudflare is aware of my session duration and based on the rules I defined earlier, requires me to re-authenticate to my IDP. While ZTNA app connectors by definition use external DNS to expose resources like this over host names, Zero Trust rules with private IPs is a unique and powerful extension of the Zero Trust framework. Cloudflare has also added functionality to its Zero Trust platform, which enables customers to use their own internal DNS resolvers for certain situations. Here, we can see I've added a private DNS test.com domain to my local domain fallback. This means that whenever I try to access something that ends in privatednstest.com, Cloudflare will not attempt to use its own DNS to resolve the host name, but instead point it at the local DNS resolver. And here, in split tunnels, I've also added the internal subnets that are involved in this process. This is important because all of this traffic will be sent to Cloudflare's edge, so I need to make sure I tell the device client to not do anything to traffic headed to this destination. This is important because organizations, especially enterprises, may require traffic to return the same way it came for security purposes. Now, inside my test environment, I have an instance of Jira spun up in one VM, but it's not exposed to the internet in the same way. Cloudflare has no DNS record to point traffic to. I've instead told my firewall to give it an internal DNS record of jira.privatednstest.com. Now on this Windows VM, I'm going to turn on the device client and access privatednstest.com. Now this is important because when you turn the device client on, it's going to try and use Cloudflare's DNS by default. Cloudflare does not know what privatednstest.com is, but because we set up the local domain fallback, it forwards the request to my internal resolver. And here, we can see the website load successfully. 
Internal DNS resolution is a small but critical ease of use feature in the context of ZTNA. Instead of deploying a VPN and trusting anyone on my private network, internal DNS resolution and zero trust rules for private IPs and host names can make it easier to migrate to a secure model that also minimizes user friction. Cloudflare Zero Trust can also manage access to non-web applications as well, such as SSH, VNC, and RDP. On the right, I'm going to sign into my browser-based SSH instance, but I'm going to run into some issues with access because my device posture is incorrect. We can see here on the left that users require an active device client and a hardware-secured key in order to be permitted through the authentication challenge. Without my device client active, Cloudflare automatically denies my access. But even after I turn it on, I'm not using an account that has a hard key configured in Okta, so I'll need to sign in with a device that meets the security posture requirements. Once I'm through, I can log into my device and begin using the resource normally. Cloudflare enables users to apply ZTNA posture rules around a wide range of criteria, including geolocation, IP addresses, user groups, emails, authentication methods, and even the presence and acceptable security score of an endpoint protection platform like CrowdStrike. Rendering non-web applications is as simple as enabling the appropriate browser rendering setting during the onboarding process. We can see that I've enabled browser-based VNC, which is what I'm logging into on the right. And finally, I'm going to use Cloudflare to manage RDP access to a server. By configuring the app connector on my origin device, my RDP traffic is also sent through Cloudflare and subject to whatever zero trust rules I've configured. Cloudflare has an exceptional reach in the context of onboarding applications into a zero trust environment, and it enables users to replace their legacy VPN setup with a solution that also provides all the benefits of using Cloudflare. Thanks for watching.